What's up, y'all? Welcome back, man. Episode number 105. I believe it's 105 of D-Friend Daily. It's about to begin right now. We got a lot of things to get into. We got Kanye West family drama. We got Kanye versus Pete, Kim, DL, Charlemagne. He even threw Tory Lanez into the mix. And you know, when it comes to Tory Lanez, I got to talk about that. So we got all that. We got a little Dirk album reaction. We got Justice Smollett getting sent to the psych ward. All that here today on D-Friend Daily. <laughs> All right, so as we know, Kanye West Instagram is the place to be. Kanye West, even though he may not be thinking he is, he delivers the content, everything, whether it's coordinated or not. Some things I believe are coordinated, and we're going to talk about that today when I think some of the coordination efforts are in reference to what he speaks about, what he talks about, all the good things like that. I was going to talk about Lil Durk's album first, but I ain't going to lie. The Kanye West shit is pressing. So let's play my new overlay. All right, so Kanye West is up first, man. I ain't gonna lie. We got a bunch of clips from Kanye. We got shit to talk about with Kanye. Um, I think it's kind of, at this point, I think at this, at this point, it feels like it's just for publicity, right? At this point, it just feels like a thing that's getting dragged out. Kanye West, God bless him. He's, he, he has a message that I believe is worthy of speaking about. We talk about father's rights and what fathers are granted in this society, maybe even around the, maybe, probably not around the world, because I feel like men and women in other parts of society are a little bit different, but here, no, there. In America, when it comes to men, women, uh, what fathers can do, what fathers can't do, it's very, very lopsided. I'm never going to disagree with that. I just, you, as you know, if you've been watching me, I just had a child. We're in the hospital, right? Everything they're asking, they're only asking her. And this is not necessarily just things to do with her body. I get that. They, hey, do you want to do this for your body? You wanna, yeah, I got that. Let's do it with the baby. The baby's, got, the baby's out now. I remember just an instance. They asked my wife something. She looked at me, asked me, hey, what do you think? I said, yeah, let's do that. And they looked back at her. Are you sure that's what you want to do? I'm like, am I not the daddy? Is my name not on that birth certificate? What, what, what? She literally asked me for confirmation. So why are you going back and asking her? So my point being is I know that there's a lot of things that dad's got to go through, whether it be child support. You know, we, we see men get raked over the coals with child support. We see baby mama tactics all over the place. But I do, in, in all genuine honesty, feel like Kanye West uses certain things to galvanize his audience. I, I've been talking about this since the beginning. You'll never hear me go against Kanye West with certain things he's talking about. The father thing, I get it. You want your kid on TikTok? That's his kid. I get it. I saw the latest TikTok of Northwest. I don't have it to play, but it's a little, what the fuck's going on here? I fell in love with the emo girl. Like She got the black makeup on her face. Although Kim is in the video with her, as a dad, if Kanye is uncomfortable, you know, and I, it should be a conversation. Now, we know in most households, it ain't, it ain't, it's never going to, I know we, in the, you know, alpha male, big dog, when I say go, da, da, but that's not reality. We can do that on the internet, you know, alpha male, woo, 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 with our women. Da, da. In reality, in the household, that's not really how shit go. It's conversations. Now, Kim will say, well, that's what North likes to do. Well, okay, we're going to have to have a conversation with everybody then. If we're going to, it's with me, it's Kanye, Kim, North, we're going to have a conversation about this TikTok shit. And before y'all post TikToks, I would like to be in the loop of what y'all are about to post. If we're going to go by this what North really wants, right? So anyways, Kanye West yesterday got on his uh, IG and he said a prayer. And this is an excerpt. I don't know if this is a prayer, him just talking. There's an excerpt of Kanye West's prayer. At this point, it's, it's, it's going too far. God... Please, the boyfriend texts me antagonizing me, bragging about being in bed with my wife. I thought I thought it publicly for a year and a half has been I've been dragged and how she's not my wife. She don't have her last name. And now he texting me talking and bragging about how he's in bed with my wife. And I'm like, well, who's watching my children if he's texting me bragging about being in bed with my wife? 
and and I thought this wasn't my wife no more legally since I got the, uh, you know, I got the lawyer to finally finish the divorce because every time I finish the show, the Free Hoover show, the next day she dropping it last night. Every time I do something positive, it's some negative that's coming. I go and get the laptop from Ray J. Then is she joking about divorce? I go and get the lawyer, change the lawyer so we can finally do the divorce. And then somehow I'm the one that's the stalker. God. I don't think, I ain't gonna lie to Big Dog, I don't think God's listening on this one. I think God is tired of the foolishness, he's tired of the bullshit. Y'all go talk, y'all discuss. I don't think God's listening to this one. So this came out before the text messages were released by, I guess, Pete Davidson's friend, who's a writer on SNL, wasn't he? Wasn't he Pete Davidson that released him, right? And we're gonna get, we're gonna talk about that aspect of it too, of Pete Davidson not being the one to release him, a surrogate being the one to release text messages between Kanye um, and him. So I just want to go over some of those messages because it's kind of, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of wild. So anyway, this was the first one that I saw. I saw, yo, it's Skeet. So Pete Davidson's even running with the Skeet. He's a comedian. You kind of got to roll with the punches. So yo, it's Skeet. Can you please take a second and calm down? It's 8 a.m. and it don't got to be like this. Kim is literally the best mother I've ever met. What she does for those kids is amazing. And you were so fucking lucky that she's your kid's mom. I've decided I'm not going to let you treat us this way anymore. And I'm done being quiet. Grow the fuck up. <clears throat> Kanye says, oh, you're using profanity? Where are you right now? And then Pete Davis responds, in bed with your wife. So, I ain't gonna lie to you. That's a, like that's a, like that's a sting. It's like all right, I'm doing all this because let's be let's be very clear. Kanye West can say you don't want Kim back anymore or whatever. They're sticking with these under under underlying feelings for Kim Kardashian. Just like I would imagine if Kim sees Kanye with the woman, she ha she might not outwardly express it, but in a way she probably feels like, you know, damn, that man was supposed to be the one I spent the rest of my life with. I love him. I did it. That that was there. I don't think I think it goes both ways. So you already know, internet, when, like when internet sees that shit, the internet go internet, people going crazy, dub Pete Davidson, da 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 they doing all this, they doing all that. So then it continues. You don't scare me, bro. Your actions are so pussy and embarrassing. It's so sad to watch you ruin your legacy on the daily. You're more than welcome to come to Sunday service. That's what Kanye is responding to Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson is blue, Kanye is gray. Why don't we meet after Sunday service and Saints game? I'll be at the BHH, what I would assume is the Beverly Hills Hotel. We can have food and talk at it, talk it out of my room. Privately, one-on-one, -on -one, man to man. What you are doing to your family is dangerous, and you're going to scar them for life. Please handle these matters privately, bro. I beg you. You want to see me? Come to Sunday service. He continues, um, this ain't public, dude. I'm not here for the pictures and press, which is obviously all you care about. My offer stands. I wish you'd man up for once in your life. Um, so I'm going to read the rest. Of so, like, I, I get, like, Pete Davis is fed up. Because, like, it's, man to man. I know. Let's take, I, I like to strip this shit away. I like to strip it down to the bare minimum. Fuck it being Kanye West. Fuck it being your favorite artist. Fuck it being whoever you look. Forget who, forget all that. Man to man. If you got a guy barking on you all day, regardless of what it is, you sleep with his wife, whatever, whatever, whatever. He don't want you around the kids, whatever. It doesn't matter. He barking at you. Constant in it. Constant in it. Constant in it. It kind of, I don't want to say it died down completely because the easy video was still out there. That was still going on. I don't think he really responded in that time. But he popped up again on a nice, beautiful Sunday morning, and you still going. So at some point, I respect that Pete Davidson reached out like, all right, this is enough. I'm tired of this. Let's talk it out, man to man. Come to my room. No paparazzi, no none of that shit. Because Kanye is saying come to Sunday service. Nothing productive comes from coming to Sunday service. Nothing at all but publicity. That's it. So in that turn, it does look like Kanye West will try to use this moment for publicity. Like, the only reason you're telling Pete to come to Sunday service is because you know, pizza, pizza Sunday service. Shh. Now, I think it would be very um, non-beneficial for Kanye West's ministry career for him to do anything physical or violent or outraged at a Sunday service because Sunday service is about the Lord. We're in the Lord's house. We're doing this and that. You know, so I know in the Bible there's wrath and vengeance and scoring and all that, but that's not the mood we're setting right here for Sunday service. So anyways, in that aspect, it does look like Kanye West is doing this for some type of promo publicity because we're going to do it out in the open. I'm offering you man-to-man, mano-mano, come to my room, no cameras, no pictures. Let's just 
chop it up. What's really, let's get down to what really the issue is because I don't know how serious Kim and Pete are, but from how he talking, because if you're just fucking a chick and it's like, I ain't really, I, don't, I ain't really caring too much. Like you got baby daddy issues, but I'm just sliding in, sliding out. I don't really want to be with you for a long time. Anyways, it seems like Pete want to, you know, possibly potentially be here for a while at least. So while I'm here, let's try to make this as amicable as possible. Also, that your girlfriend, Pete's probably seeing Kim, you know, I don't want to say, in anguish every day or whenever Kanye's posting, right? So he tells him to pull up. But it seems like he's trying to, like, little boy Kanye. Like, I'm like, you pussy, you're embarrassing, your legacy. Like, you talk, like, I get it. He been going at you, but you're talking real spicy. And I'm not one of those people that's in the in the mindset that, you know, Kanye's a black guy, Pete's a white guy. He can automatically take him. I'm not I'm not in that mindset. Or he's a rapper. He's I'm I'm not in that mindset. I know a lot of people have that mindset, but that's not me. Let's finish. Let me know. Uh let me help you, man. I struggle with mental health stuff too. It's not an easy journey. You don't have to feel this way anymore. There's no shame in having a little help. You'll be happy in at peace. You have no idea how nice I've been to you despite your actions towards me. I've stopped SNL from talking about uh, talking about or making fun of you, which they wanted to do for months. I've stopped stand-up comedians from doing. He he's went on and on and on. Like pretty much like I'm protecting you out here. People want to talk shit about you. I'm telling no, don't do that. No, don't do this. Now, can I be honest for a second? I don't think P's doing that for Kanye. P's doing that for Kim. Because what? Anytime I talk about Kanye and Kim or Pete and Kim. Everybody, be, well, she brought him to SNL to see her kiss his new boyfriend. That's what everybody tells me. So you would have to believe that if Pete Davis is on SNL, your show continues to discuss Kanye West. What's Kanye West going to do? He's going to continue to tie, not the whole show, Pete Davis into the reason that SNL is shitting on him. He's going to tie it into his narrative that look at the mainstream leftist Hollywood meat. Look what they're doing to me. That's what he's going to do. And he does it well because people feed into that shit. I don't, I, I don't know. You, you school me. I don't know what the hell this guy do with politics when it comes to Kanye West. I don't know what this guy do with leftist or any of those things. And you'll say, because he's free of thought. He's a free thinker. He All that shit, right? If you actually go to what's being talked about in politics, not bullshit social, when you go to what's actually being talked about in politics on the biggest politics shows, left or right, it has nothing to do with Kanye West at all. Nobody's talking about Kanye West unless it's a pop culture thing. That's it. As far as right now. So for Kanye's thing of thinking that, oh, the leftists are after me. I think it's just a, another way to bring in another type of element to the conversation. Because we have, he, he's brought up the black man and the white woman and how they do this, how they do that. You bring the politics, that's divisive. We bring this and we bring that. Like, he's bringing in elements that are real, but to put onto himself and then make that a part of the story as well, when they might not even be a part of the story at all. But it'll be easy for us as consumers, as viewers, to put those pieces to the puzzle together, and that's what I would assume Kanye West would want. And like I said, in no way do I not think that Kanye doesn't want the best for his kids. He don't want his kids on TikTok. Get the f- and a man ain't comfortable with the girls be on TikTok. Or at least he's not comfortable with the way y'all doing certain things on TikTok. And that should be addressed, that should be spoken about. I agree with that. Kanye West wants to see his kids. It should be set up to where he can see his kids. But if we're being honest, like I said, we don't know the ins and outs. We don't know the behind the scenes. But since these things, I've seen his kids with him, you know, throughout times. Now, obviously, the kids are in school, so we see Kanye at the Heat game. He's in Miami this day. He's in Atlanta this day. He's in New York this day. Obviously, they can't bounce around, so they're not going to be with him forever. So I guess his thing is, hey, I'm going to travel around all week, but when I come to L.A., I want them to be with me on these days. We just saw them with him at the Super Bowl. We saw them with him at the Black Future Brunch. Whenever we see Kanye out, I think we even seen him at a Sunday service at one point. When we see Kanye out, his kids are typically with them, so I don't know if this is a narrative thing because children pull up the heartstrings. We're in this battle for children right now. 
the school boards, the moms, the dads, the everybody uh, trying to protect the kids. We got the some weird thing I've seen recently, like sexy summer camp. But the kids are under attack, and I know because I'm seeing what's going on. We got the Florida bill. Don't say gay. They're saying, oh, they're trying to discriminate. I'm not getting into all that, but you know, it's out there. Kids are a primary focus in politics right now. So then after the text messages go off, um, people start using that. They start running with that. There was another part that another layer. And see this, when I say, I think shit's calculated. This is what I'm talking about. This, when I say, I think shit's calculated to like pull different webs and strings and then bring them all back to one person. I think that's what this conversation is really about. And just to break that down, when I say that, I mean, when I say the politics, that's a part of a web, right? Leftists are after me, the pawns, we'll get that with D.L. Hughley, but brings it back to Kanye. The kids, a father's plight, men's plight. We don't, I fuck with the men. I, I know what's going on with me. I know men can pull you back to Kanye. Different audience, pull you back. Different audience, pull you back. And then this is the next conversation that's going on, especially the most, pretty much this is the, the, to me, this is the most divisive talking point, scenario, topic, in hip hop at the moment. And this is what he had to say. So I called different people I knew and the best advice I got right now was from Tory Lanez. And he just said to pray and ask for God to speak through me. You know, I got four children and there's so many people who don't have a voice and have the opportunity to be able to speak up and just God, if it is in your will, you know, touch the people that are currently watching, my children, whatever sleepovers at, wherever they are at, the various nannies that watch all the, the children um, and, and touch them and say, please bring my children to Sunday service this morning at 10 a.m., you know, God, just it's this is out of my hands. It's up to you. This whole all right. So pretty much that that became a topic of conversation. Oh, why would he bring a PR team? Get Tory Lanez out of here. Do this, do that. that became a topic of conversation. But to me, I just felt like that was just to add another layer. It wasn't genuine. Now, Tory Lanez did respond to this. And he said, "Imagine people being mad by a man just saying the best he got, advice he got was speak through or let God speak through you and speak to you and speak from you or whatever he said." I just looked at that like that's calculated. Even if. Tory Lanez was this person that he spoke to. It's calculated. The same way when he, the baby was canceled, he brought him on, calculated. Marilyn Manson, he, what he got going on is like, the baby, like whatever he got going on, that's completely separate. That's a, that's a whole, you know, that's a whole nother conversation. But bring him on. Conversation in another realm that leads back to Kanye West. I know, because I don't want to use the word crazy, but we know Kanye West loves Kanye West. He says all the time. And I've said this before. I don't know if it was on Absolute Shirt Podcast. I don't know if it was on this podcast. I don't know where it was at. But I do feel like Kanye West saw something in Donald Trump, and he said, I want that. I mean, I feel like he's even said it himself. He was at the White House, Maggie had on, big Trump hugging him. He was so happy to be around him because guys like that. And it's not a bad thing because guys like that, Trump, Kanye, they become hyper, they become hyper successful, right? People may look at that, whatever they do as a bad character, trait, but they do become a lot of people who do that become hyper successful. But I think he saw how much conversation is around Trump, how polarized because because like, they said it doesn't matter. Attention is attention. He's so polarizing. The conversation is always on him. Every time he did something, people talked about it. And right now, with media, every time Kanye does something, he is the trending topic. He's pretty much like Trump on a smaller scale. Now, not to diminish him, the black man, he's a, no, it's, Trump was the president. <laughs> That's global shit. You know what I'm saying? Kanye is a global superstar, but as far as people giving a fuck about Kanye and his kids and Kim and Pete, they, they, don't, really, they don't really care, right? On a global world stage but trump and i see like kanye seen that he wants to be that he wants to emulate that so i feel like that's why he picked up the politics oh but look at this the leftists are after me and like he picked that up 
because he knows it's going to be a conversation piece. And see, I feel like I always got to preface this and that and this and that. But he's been talking about George Bush. For, I know he did that. I know he's done that before. I'm telling you how I feel now. You might not agree with how I feel, but this is how I feel about what's going on right now. Bring up that. You try to hop into politics because you see the true power is in that, is in that conversation. That's the real power, right? Or the perceived power of president and what you can do and how you can control and how you can be talked about, whatever like that. So then once we get off of Pete, we get off of Kim, we get on to how I initially saw this go down. And it was D.L. Hughley. So Kanye put up this post. He said, we're going to stop letting practicing drug addicts be used by leftists to Willie Lynch, our future black people with their own opinion are not allowed to speak in public. I am the glitch DL. God does not like you. I don't like who, who is like, I know Kanye is, is Sunday service, but who is Kanye to speak for God? Let's keep it up. Who is Kanye to speak for God? He don't like DL Hughley. How he know that? And then he said, people with our own opinion are not allowed to speak in public. DL from now preface again. I'm not saying DL Hughley's never criticized Kanye for the slavery shit. You've heard me and Bryce talk about the slavery shit on a, on, 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 is it a micro or a macro, whatever. I see what he's saying when he comes about the slavery thing. I get it. I get what he's saying. But when DL Hughley just criticized you now, it wasn't about your opinion. It was about your actions towards a person. That he felt he was asked by Vlad and he felt that, you know, it wasn't the best thing. Because like he said, and I say this all the time, strip away who the person is. Strip away Kanye West. From, take the face away from the actions. Look at the actions. If that was anybody else, most people would be dragging them. But we like who we like. That's human nature. We're always going to give the benefit of the doubt to people that we like. That's just That's just human nature. It's not even a flaw on you. That's just human nature. Everybody's going to do that. When they said that Drake raped some girl or something, I was like, ah, it's not, come, not, not Drake. If y'all tell me somebody else, I might be like, maybe he did. That's human nature. We all got that within our brains. But let me continue. God does not like you. You have no favor. Your family hates you. <laughs> like, how does he get these things? Your family hates you. I would hate to be related to somebody who used to be famous. And see, that's that cycle out that used to be famous. Like, that's like the only thing that matters. You got to look at the just the small things that Kanye would say that, that can really tell you about himself. I would hate to, like, think about that, bro. Like, your, fr your family was somebody who used to be, I would hate to be famous with somebody who used to be famous. You ain't famous no more. What you doing here at Thanksgiving with us? You showing up to Christmas. You used to be famous. What are you talking about? You used to now you're just known as a broke pawn. At least Oprah got billions, allegedly. And I'm not really trying to dissect this whole thing, but Kanye West really be stuck. He, oh, he wants to be the only black billionaire. He wants to be that. He's trying to discredit Oprah's billionaire status. When Kanye West billionaire, and this is even trying to rip on him, but like, I'm just talking about facts here. Kanye West keeps saying he's the richest black man ever. No, you're not. He's not the richest black man ever. And I ain't even talking about Massa Musa and da, 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 all that. Dan Gote over there in Nigeria is worth $14 billion. Kanye's not. Kanye West say six, Forbes say 1.8. He'll say Forbes hating on them. Y'all say they hating on them. So it might be six, might be seven. They're using that off a gap deal. I don't know. He's rich. But that's, a, that's another thing that he got to. I'm the rich. You're not the richest, but people will feed into that. I don't know how y'all be feeding into this shit. He's talented. He's great. Jesus, genius was a great documentary. I did the verses. I smoked Bryce with Kanye. I got Kanye on the wall. He's a fucking legend, but that nigga's full of shit. Come on, leftist. Nigga, leftist. What we talking about leftist? Y'all got to do better than DL. This yay. Bring the real smoke, baby. Show your real face. Charlemagne just don't hit the same, do we? Who y'all gonna get now? God is with us, and you send DL to be against us. <clears throat> y'all really think DL Hughley is, if the leftists is really trying to get Kanye, y'all think DL Hughley is the one they gonna send? Like, <laughs> like that's what y'all, like, that's what y'all think. Y'all really be believing this shit that coming out of Kanye's mouth? 
The left is like aspiring to take out Kanye. Kanye has no, like, let's go. Let's keep it going. He's an amazing musician. He's a great businessman. He's a billionaire. He's great, but the shit he say is fucking ridiculous. Y'all got to do better than DL and Charlamagne. Uh, who y'all going to get now? God is with us, and you done send DL to be against us. You've lost. No brilliant Hebrews will bow to y'all. No more. Only dumbass drug addict house niggas. Don't play me and don't play with God. Anybody related to DL, Chris McLean at Adidas for Yeezys, they not free though. We running a business over here. He just getting ran. You see Skeet missing work. Anybody else want to play with me? Please, 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 for the love of God, come and get me. Let's see how it turns out. And he's re referencing because DL said, if that was my child, I would come get you. Not that I'm going to come get you on behalf of Kim Kardashian. <clears throat> He also had another post. I couldn't find it, though. It got deleted. Where he was pretty much like, essentially, <laughs> I got enough money to get short. So he's threatening you with physical violence. He put out that deal. He lives in Calabasas. Look at look what Kanye West did all over someone else's opinion. Threatened violence. Tried to dox you. Tried to say your family hates you. God hates you. God don't love you. Because of his opinion about you. Is Kanye West the only one allowed to have opinions? Or is any critique of Kanye the worst, gravest sin of all? And it, and it requires full force. Threats of violence, threats of doxing, all these things due to him, you know, not agreeing with somebody else's opinions of him. And he brought up Charlamagne the God. Charlamagne the God did like an 11-minute game donkey of the day this morning. Um, had certain points here and there. He was discussing this, discussing that. He brought up, he knows the real reason the real reason why Ye is mad, people are speculating something that has to do with penis size. I don't know how the, the, the girl blogs picked that part about the, pe the penis size. Thing. I, I get how you can insinuate that by what he was saying, but I don't know if that's really what the conversation between him and Kanye was about because that kind of conversation comes out. It's going to be like, kind of, mm, what's going on here? He also brought up how people know the shit that he's doing behind the scenes, all the phone calls he's making behind the scenes that aren't public, trying to get people done here, do this here, do this there, da da da. All these different elements Kanye West is putting, all this energy he's putting into these things. But I ain't gonna lie. When I saw Charlemagne give Kanye West donkey today, and Kanye West has all eyes on him right now, he's revved up and ready to go. I said. If Kanye West, and no, this has already been put in the media. It gets brought up every three years. It gets brought up and brought up and brought up and brought up against Charlemagne. He seems to always beat it, right? Because whether the evidence comes out, says inconclusive, it's not here, it's not there, whatever the reason is. If Kanye West bring up that Jessica Reed shit, whether it's true or not, because we really, at the end of the day, it's only he say, she say. It's really, uh, like the evidence, we've read the evidence here, we've seen it out here, like it's, inconclusive he gave samples there was no we couldn't we couldn't really trace the samples the mama didn't want to do it you we don't know right but if Kanye West just shed light on the same way Kwame Brown did I was like I don't know if this is time to go go not even go at Kanye just give your opinion and critique on Kanye when he's you know ready to go at any turn at any standpoint in any way so anyways D.L. Hughley responded this is what D.L. Hughley said he said hmm Ain't it weird that Kanye supposedly has all these goons who would kill for him, but none of them will get his prescriptions filled? Here's a thought. While you're on your way to kill me in Calabasas, how about you stop, uh, drop by CVS to pick up his Xanax? LOL. Hashtag Team Dia. So pretty much poking fun at the folk, uh, the fact that Kanye openly has expressed his mental health. We know that. I guess you know, one of his albums literally called like, hey, I'm bipolar and I love it. I forgot what it's called. Somehow I'm bipolar. We know he has mental health issues. And that's how it is. So he also went on to say, hashtag Kanye, it's just too bad that you act like a nut. Won't stop Pete Davidson from busting one. So just essentially, you know, patting on that wound of, you know, Pete Davidson, uh, most likely at this point, you know, piping uh, Kim Kardashian at this point. So I don't know how this ends, when this ends, but Kim Kardashian is seeming like she's fed up with the shit. Kanye West posted something this morning and she's responded. He said, 
This was on my daughter's. He said this was on my daughter's backpack when I was allowed to see her last week, and he put quotations around allowed. This is why I go so hard for my family. I'm wi- I'm wired to protect my family at all costs. As the priest of my home, don't worry, Northy. God is still alive. Now I don't know what this has to do with. Is it the alien? Is that what he's referring to? Is like the aliens ungodly? Like I'm just looking like it's a kid with an alien sticker. Like I don't understand. I don't get this post that he's posted. Maybe he was just trying to reference like I've seen North recently, but only I was allowed to last week. But Kim responded under the post. She said, please stop with this narrative. You were just here this morning picking up the kids for school. You were just here. You took the kids to school. What are you? What are we doing? I think even if Kanye West was exposed for like stretching the truth, falsifying a narrative, people would still be like, there's still an underground. Like I said, it's all about, at the end of the day, it's just all about who we like. That's it. Nobody's object, objective. Nobody's unbiased. Who do we like and what situation is really going on? The Kardashians just dropped their documentary. Not the documentary, their trailer. The Hulu show is about to come out. Maybe, you know, Kim's like, fuck it. I'm about to start talking and get my name in there. Hulu, this, that. Maybe that's why she's finally responding. Who knows? But you would have to assume, who knows when they start a film, when they stop filming. I don't know. You'd have to assume this Kanye West drama will be, like, the best, like, you got to think, too. Like, Kim hasn't really said a lot that we've seen. A lot, a lot. You got to think the best thing for Kim Kardashian to do would be to zip it, shut up. Because most people are wondering whether you like Kim or not, what is she thinking? How does she feel? Is she crying at home? Is she okay? Or fuck that bitch. I want to see how, how, how down bad that bitch is. You'll probably see it on the show. And you know what everybody's going to do? They're going to go to that Hulu app. They're going to click on that Hulu app. And they're going to check out how Kim Kardashian reacted to all the things that are going on with Kanye West. So, like I said, and then it's all everything's everything's a marketing thing at the end of the day, bro. Everything is marketing. Everything, whether it's real beef, fake beef, real drama, real narratives, fake narratives, it all gets tied back into attention for something. For something. So, I just want to reiterate before we get off this topic. I'm not mad at Kanye West for saying he don't want his kid on TikTok. That's his kid. I'm not mad at Kanye West for bringing up real plights that fathers do go through. I just don't want him to exploit a real plight and relay it back to something that he is not really going through for the benefit of him being the victim. I don't like shit like that. I don't like stuff like that. Because like he brought up like, hey, I told the kids to fly in to Donna 2. Kim texts me, North's not on the plane. Now, y'all, I have kids. I don't know how you have kids. I know I'd be disappointed in my daughter if I was bringing her out to something. and Because she's at the age where she kind of be like, oh, I don't really want to go. I don't want to go. Because like, Kanye's all about, oh, no, he's not about. She's about. Kim's about. Whatever North wants to do, whatever makes her happy, yada, yada, yada. How do we know North just didn't want to go? She didn't want to go to Miami. Maybe she wants to stay in Calabasas and hang out with her friends. Maybe she don't want to, mommy, we've already been to all daddy shows. I don't want to go. Do I have to? And like, I mean, Northy, if you don't want to go, you don't have to. Maybe she's at their age. The mother kids, they're babies. I don't really know what the fuck they want to do. They just know they're flying. Well, anybody even know they're flying. They're just going. So that's another element of it, too. Maybe North just don't want to do these things. Like, we can speculate and do all these things. Like, people speculate and look at North at the Super Bowl. North don't want to be there with her daddy at the Super Bowl. She don't want to be here. She want to be at home. Maybe that's it. So, anyways, let's let's move it along. Let's get it rolling. Let's get it rolling. Jesse Smollett. The brother Jesse Smollett, man. He he's done. Right? Went to trial, found guilty, and his sentence was hand down. Restitution, 120K, got to pay it. $25,000 fine on top of that, got to pay it. And then the judge said, also, 
I think you said six months probation or something like that. Plus, starting now, today, as we walk in the courtroom, 150 days in jail. And this was just his response to that. Okay. I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am innocent and I am not suicidal. If I did this, then it means that I stuck my fist in the fears of black Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this and I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. I am not. Hey, jail time? Hell no. All that other shit, 120 restitution, all that, I'll do that. But jail? No, I got to make a stand. So, to me, let me just, I'm not going to miss words. I thought this was like pathetic. Like, at this, like, it'd be better for him and his career if he just admit that he did it. It'd be better. It'd be better if you just admit that's probably why the judge gave him 150 days, right? You know how, like, when they feel like a person ain't got no remorse and they ain't got this, and they continue to keep, like, we pulled up the, like, we got the, we got the Nigerian brothers saying, like, we got the video of them buying the rope, buying this, buying that. We got the confession. Say y'all set up. Say y'all planned it. Every already, everybody already thinks you're lying anyways. Why even die on this hill? You might as well be like, hey, you know what? I did it. I lied. There was no, <laughs> it was a hoax. My bad. I thought I was going to get away with it. I was trying to, you know, get a little bit more money from Empire. Trying to make people feel bad for me. Trying to throw my name in the pilot. I don't know what he was trying to do. It'd be better if he just said that. But he keeps on doubling down that he's innocent. And then he... I would have did it for the. I'm doing it for the black. People. This was like, like these celebrities. They be trying to use real shit and they bullshit because they know people are gonna. They pull on the heartstring like, yeah, black people have been done dirty, have been discriminated against, have been lynched, have been this, have been that. Because they think that people. Are, oh yes, yeah, just because there are people that still like that. I did a story a couple weeks ago where Black Lives Matter was like, we're still support. Just, we never believe the police. I. All right, that's what y'all want to put y'all horse behind. Y'all got it. Now, regarding the sentence, do I think that it's a little, you know, lengthy? 150 days equates to what? You divide that, let's say average months, 30 days, about five months in jail for that? Eh. I've seen little white boys rape people and get out for less than that. And I know I don't want to do the what about us and the comparisons because of different judges, their jurisdiction, different state, different laws, different this, different that. But I think if the, if the main thing is like, hey, we wasted money on this shit, no victims in the crime, the restitution, y'all want y'all money back? Get y'all money back. Jesse, I'm here like the gross sisters. Give my money. I get that. But the five months, that's a little bit lengthy, right? So people came out. Because that's really, when it comes to this, this is all you can speak about. Him lying, him getting be found guilty, him not pay restitution. I can't not speak that about that. You got that. But the five months of where it gets a little bit tricky. So, Taraji P, obviously, co-star, Cookie Empire. That's where we all, that's where at least I was brought on to just my lip. This is what she had to say. She said, I'm not here to debate you on his innocence. But we can agree that the punishment does not fit the crime. The Oscar-nominated actress wrote on Instagram post Sunday, Emmett Till, and I've seen Amanda Seals use this reference as well, Emmett Till was brutally beat and ultimately murdered because of a lie. And none of the people involved with this, his demise spent one day in jail, even after Carolyn Bryan admitted that her claims were false. No one was hurt or killed during Jesse's ordeal. He has already lost everything, everything she went on to say. To me, as an artist... Not being able to create, that in itself is punishment enough. He can't get a job. No one in Hollywood will hire him. And again, as an artist who loves to create, this is prison. My prayer is that he is freed and put on house arrest and probation because that case, uh, that because in that case, this would seem fair. I think, like, honestly, like, not even, 
I don't think he should be in jail at all. Like, let's just give you the buck. Give us the money back and keep it pushing. You're a liar. It's cool. You did what you did. Nobody was harmed. Nobody was hurt. That's good. It's the same way I say, I've said, and maybe this is going on in the States right now. I just don't really know about it. We don't really hear about it too much. People that lie on people, like she brought up Emmett Till. That's like, a, that's like an extreme thing. Like, you lying to the fact where I get killed. I don't know if that happens too much in today's society. Maybe it does. We don't really hear about it. But same thing with the with the sexual assault type things. Like, hey, you lied on me. Like, the Chris, like with reference to like the Chris Brown shit. Like, you did all this. I got the voicemails. I got this. I got that. You try to ruin my career. Defamation. You should probably go to jail for a little bit for that. Not years. 150 days. Let you sit down and think about, hey, will I ever go out here and wrongfully accuse somebody again? Probably not. Don't want to do that. Don't want to do the time. So, I knew he was doing it all. I'm not suicidal. I'm not suicidal. They're not going to kill you. You're not Jeffrey Epstein. You're not this person. You're not that person. They're not going to kill you. They just want to get you back there and tell you to shut the hell up and just sit down and do your time. You're lying. Just shut up. I initially thought he was doing that because he was going to kill himself. And then the fact that he said that in court, it was going to be another one of the things like, he said he was suicidal in court. They killed him. Like one of those type of deals. Cause that'd be like the corn, like to like, to, to, to die. That's literally dying on the hill. Literally. That's why I literally was like, that was my first instinct. When he said, I'm not suicidal. My first instinct was he go kill himself in prison. And then people are just going to reference it. He said, I'm not suicidal in court. And then there is something going on with this police force. Maybe like he really was literally going to die on that hill. So his brother, <clears throat> his brother, who sounds just like him, looks just like him, made a reference that Jesse, once he was booked, they put him in the psych ward. So Jesse is currently in the psych ward um, at Cook County Jail. It's... What's very concerning is that there was a note attached to his paperwork today and put on the front of his um, jail cell saying that he's at risk of self-harm. I want to just make it clear to folks that he is in no way, shape, or form at risk of self-harm. Um, and he wants to let folks know that, that he is, and he is very stable, he is very strong, he is very healthy and ready to take on the challenge that ultimately has been put up against him. Um, this is not right. This is This is completely lack of justice, it's it's angering, it's an outrage, but he ultimately knows what he needs to do. So we wanna make sure that folks understand that, you know, whatever whatever inside Cook County Jail they may, what assumptions they be, may be making, I don't know why they even have him in a psych ward. Um, we still have not gotten clear answers there and why he's even in a psych ward. And they've recently added to his documentation that- um, The man is in a psych ward because the man created and made a very fake Hate crime. You got to have something wrong with you. Like, this is the one thing. I ain't going to lie. This is the one thing. And I know I hate bringing this shit up because it always brings up too much conversation. But this is the one instance where I'm like, bro, with everything I'm seeing, especially maybe not now new evidence has come out, this and that, no gun residue, no this and no that. So maybe I'd be swayed to the right. The Tory Lanez might not have done it. Like, this is the only thing that got me like, bro, if Meg the Stallion really did all that just for the fuck of it this guy is the only guy that's making me think like bro people may actually do shit like this it's him because noose on neck a it's maga people it's 2 a.m in chicago i'm going to get subway like it just shit just do not add up and i i, I wonder as a family member of justice Smollett, it's different from supporting your person when they did something messed up then also diving in and probably supporting the, does, does the brother really think that this happened after everything he's seen after everything he's heard? And I get it, it's hard to, to differentiate wrongdoing by family members. I get that. I get it. But it's like, do you really like in your heart of heart, like if I could get into your mind and really like, do you believe, do you believe your brother? No, don't, don't lie, bro. No, I don't believe him, but I support my brother. I don't want him in prison. Okay. I, I, I feel that. I feel that. Nobody wants to see that people in prison. I agree. I feel you. I'm not going to bash you on that. But he doing, he did, he did this video. He got shot out the courtroom. Where will be justice for my brother? Da, da, like Nothing else is coming out. Jesse's fried. He's in jail. 150 days. Do I think it's just? No. Do I think he should pay the restitution? Yes. You let him on a wild goose chase. You waste the money. I know other people's arguments. I've seen, well, that waste money. I don't know. Whatever. He lied. For whatever reason he lied, 
You do the time, you do the crime, you pay the fine. That's what it is. I don't want him to do the crime and pay do the time. I want him to do the time or do the crime, pay the fine. That's it. And just admit it. Like, I, I you could probably get jobs if you just admit it. Like, cause people like at, at the end of the day, the shit that just to let do, then white people that don't really like this shit. Oh, you created the bit. They probably won't even watch shit. Black people, they probably. I mean, whatever. Fuck it. Like, what was he in? He's in this movie. I don't give a fuck. I'm, like, it's not gonna be a boycott against the movie. I don't think so. I think people gonna laugh. Like it's a joke. Like we're laughing at you. Like it's funny. Like what the fuck are you doing? So that's what Jesse got to go. That's what he got ahead of him right now. That's what he got to deal with. So what I was gonna start with and originally was new music, new music, new music. But I got backtracked. I got sidetracked, and I got into all this. I got into all that. So Lil Durk dropped his album seven two two. I think it's seven two two zero. That is. Uh, I'm assuming that is the the sh- the street number. Or, yeah, I'm assuming that's the street number where his grandma lived. So initially when I listened to the album, I wasn't that pleased. Like, I was like, where's the rumor, Dirk? Where's the aha-ha, Dirk? Where's the where's the Dirk that was on? What's that other song that I really like by Dirk in, oh, uh, fuck, what's that record? I don't know. Where's that Dirk at? Where are these Dirks at? What is this it's kind of slow? Oh, my woman. Da, da, da. No, I don't want to hear that shit. Now, that's not to say that some of the records don't have that, you know, aha a uh, rumor vibe to him. I'm not saying it's not that, but I was expecting a lot of it. But then when I thought about it, I'm putting my expectations on this man and his art and his artwork. And anytime you put expectations on somebody else's art, nine times out of 10, you'll probably be coming away disappointed. So this morning, I went on my morning walk, put it back in, no expectations. I actually sat there and listened. I think that little Dirk put together, especially first two tracks. Before we got to, I was like, all right, I'm going to give y'all two introspective off the bat, right? Because this got to do with my granny, uh, my grandma house, this, that. That's how we rocking. Two introspective tracks. Talk about his daddy, talking about how his daddy was in life in prison, how he lost Nooski, how Nooski used to live in the first floor in his grandma house, how he lost his brother, how he lost Vaughn. How he wasn't close to his his uncles or his dad. All these things, his whole life. Like he's just talking about his life. Like I wasn't here. This is what happened here. This is why I was traumatic here. This is what happened here. Great. Loved him. I like introspective shit. I like to see you be able to create outside of the just shoot him up, bang, bang. Because there's a lot of shoot him up, bang, bang on here, right? That's not a critique. That's just the content that's on here at some point. Then he jumps, aha. That's I like that record. Boom. I don't give a damn if it's a diss. I ain't even worried about that. I ain't even listen. Oh, he's dissing you. I don't give a damn. It's a hard record. No, let me put up the track list. Because I got some shit to say. All right. So, doom. We go to Aha. Then he go to Shoot Out of My Crib. That's where he lost me for a second. Because there's a couple of things he said in here that just... Little quirky lines are like, what is Dirk talking about? He said, like this, like this gotta be like, if we could put the most random lines of hip hop together, this gotta be one of the most random lines of hip hop ever. My fart smells like lean and perks. If I fart my, it's gonna smell like lean and perks. Now I don't know if perks and lean have a smell. I'm not a connoisseur of both. I'm not around people that are connoisseurs of both in, in unison. And I'm not around them when they fart. So I don't know if there's an actual thing. But he just said that. It kind of threw me for a loop. Now, Shootout at the Crib was a good record. Talk about the shootout. Got to hire security. Don't want to go to prison for life. Life in prison. I want to be smart. I want to do this. I want to do that. Great record. But it was just like, that's really what stuck out. To, like, that fart really got me. I was stuck on that. I was like, what is he talking about? Right? So then, <clears throat> it goes on. Golden Child interviews. There was cool records. I love the Petty Two shit. I like that record. Future, that's a future, that's a future, like, that's what future, that's like future shit, like Petty, future, they just go together, it's like yin and yang, Petty and Future, they just go together, they're made, match made in heaven. Petty music towards women is Future's bread and butter. Great, amazing, love it. And then, we get to, what happened to Virgil? The first time I heard what happened to Virgil, I was like, God damn, Gunner's on another fucking level. I know I kind of, I want to say I shitted on Gunner in the beginning. 
when it came to you know his album and the rollout, I was just so surprised. Like one fifty people, so I'm always so surprised when I see the marketing work. When the marketing works for people, I'd be so surprised by it. So I was just surprised by it, like that. That's how it was going on. So then he get into the later parts of the album. It gets more like more melodic, more moody, more you know. We got the differences, federal nightmares, all, you know things like that. And then piss me off is it piss me off is piss me off. And then Broadway Girls is Broadway Girls. Even Morgan Whalen. I like that record. So overall, it's a solid project from Dirk. Not the great. I think it's the album of the year. Oh, album. Of, nah, probably not. But also, I was thinking while I was taking my walk, because when you're walking, you, know, you can reflect, you can just listen, you can just, you know, think. I was like, we don't really be giving these albums enough time to even, like, grow on us. Like, if you think about back when you were young, and I don't know how old you are watching this, but, you know, if you're, like, a little kid, like, if you a little kid watching this shit, you only know streaming, so y'all just shuffle through shit. If you're about my age, you in your, your mid-20s, you know, you remember, like, when you get a CD, like, that's all you can listen to. So you spinning that bitch over and over and over and over and over and over. It don't matter if you don't like it the first time. You got that CD. That's what you got till, you know, two months when your next artist, your next favorite artist, you willing to invest money in your drop. So you CD, CD, you listen, you listen, you listening. I think if we listen to albums more, we would appreciate albums more. I think we're so microwave is so fast. Like, the Dirk drop this week. Money bag drop next week. And it, uh, uh, push drop this week. And it, you almost dropping it. It's like it's too it's too much. It's too it's too many artists, too many people that are talked about, too many people that we want to listen to. It's just it's just too much. So I don't think artists in today's day and age will even really get the true appreciation that they would get if it wasn't like how it is with streaming. Streaming is easy, bro. I pay ten dollars a month. I can listen to anything in the world, anything from the old days to the to the now. I can listen to anything I want to listen to, any genre, any it does anything. And I feel like that's what diminishes you know music. But like I said, Dirk's album. It sounds pretty good. Is it live up to the hype? The, the one of the top guys. I don't know. I, I think that I think the hype is more hype than you know that actual stance. Like he's got his features that I really love, and I feel like a lot of people really go hard on their features. And when they do their own albums, they try to do, go a little bit a different way. And I get it. It's your art. You create how you want to create. So these are his projections. Lil Durk seven twenty two is projected to sell one twenty to one thirty first week. 128% higher than his previous first week peak on a solo project, 57,000. Second 2022 hip hop album to sell 100K plus first week, Gunna did 150,000. It should be Dirk's first ever Billboard 200 number one. So, salute to him. That's great. But it gets you thinking like all the hype around him for the only do is, is are, are we living in an age, like I said, are we living in an age of talent? Or marketing. Like, he do 120, right? I get it. No really big single behind it. But it also made me think, like, is the beef enough promo? Because Gunner shit was just pretty, like, that Push and P shit went crazy. Everybody was using it. Mother was making merch. People was making rugs. The P probably was, if you if you can look at Apple Analytics, that P even, P, that P emoji, I ain't doing B's down, no, no, no set tripping. That P emoji was probably like the number one most used or number one most added, whatever, whatever little stats they come up with, I would assume that P emoji was the most used in that time. So Gunner just had great marketing. That was, that was good. Like I said, you got to give shit time. It's been about, a, what, two months since it's been out? That was good. It got songs in there that I really like. Initially, I was kind of, eh, 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 but I guess after listening to it a couple times, you kind of get like, okay, I actually do like this shit. So that's what it got me thinking about with Dirk. It's like, and even when I was, I seen, they post, like, I think, because when I see people post numbers, it'd be academics. So academics post the numbers. I guess people's kind of like, I don't know, dismissing the numbers, yada, yada. So he kind of like gave an excuse for why the numbers are what they are. He's like, this ain't about the album quality. This is, the product is already sold to you before you even get it. And that's true. It's because it's like most people don't first listen to an album off word of mouth. Word of mouth do help longevity of an album. But initially, it's, it's hype. How can you get people excited? That's pretty much how you're going to get your first week numbers. Roddy Rich didn't get nobody excited. That's why he sold 67. That, like these numbers, when you really think about these numbers, they're not to say that like Roddy Rich is 
a way less artist than a Gunna or or, or, or Dirk or a Polo or Rod or any of these other artists, their marketing is just better than yours. And the only words I, per, person I probably take out of that conversation is Rod Wave. Because I don't think Rod Wave's shit is like just super marketed. Like he's trying to have a rollout. I think he just makes great. Like, like I think he's one of the people that just makes really good music. And people really just fuck with the music. I think that's Rod Wave's thing. Because I would love, to, I wish we could live in like, like we can peek into alternate realities and see like, okay, if Dirk didn't do the aha shit and he wasn't beefing with Dirk, I mean, I would beef with Dirk, beef with Youngboy for the past week. Like, what would he really have sold? Like, let's put a lens into that. Let me see what that really looks like. But we can't do that. And then I, just, I thought about that too because I saw him. He was tweeting, 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 tweeting. He was like, Dirk's officially a big dog. I'm like, I thought about it. I was like, we can't call, we can't, we, we, I feel like it diminishes big, we can't call 100,000 big dog status. I still think if you if you think it's a hundred thousand, you you still like a you you like you're a dog, but you ain't like a dog dog. Like, cause when I think a dog, I'm thinking about people who selling like four hundred, five hundred, six hundred. Like, the, you know, we know who the dogs are. We like the Drakes, the Kendricks, the like we know the, the, the Travis's. The, the, you, we know who the dog. Like those are the dog dogs. You know what I'm saying? You squeak in with a hundred and twenty. It's like, is he a he's a big dog? Like, that's that's the great thing about academics and his like his influence and his. His um his his ability to like create narratives because now I feel like through at least hip hop in the younger generation a hundred thousand is now the benchmark. Anybody who can't hit a hundred thousand, they look at them crazy. They look at them weird. Like, oh, are you ain't hundred? Are you not a big dog? Like it's been it's been woven in. I feel like to the youth that a hundred thousand is the pinnacle. Once you cross that threshold, you made it. You're here. I don't even think that's the case, cause like, you might be like B B tier, man. Like, like I said, like the old, like the, the old, the the old man that like who, which I would consider like LeBron, they still dropping fifty a night, like Drake and them, like Drake Kendrick Cole, like shit. Yeah, I'm not giving up to new people. You know, he's white, he's mixed genre. I get it. Post Malone's like shit. Trap Travis did five hundred thousand the last time he dropped. How much Tyler Creator do? Let me see. Let me look for last year. Let me look at last year. All right, we got it right here. On beats and rhymes. Salute beats and rhymes. Because I'm just like, bro, is that really big dog? Is that big dog status? Like, uh-huh, like a uh-huh is the benchmark now? Oh, I guess. Okay. <clears throat> so this is last year. This is like the biggest dog, right? Like, think about six thirteen first week. That's the biggest dog. And y'all know who that is. Six thirteen. Yay, three oh nine. Cole, two eighty two. Modest two eighty two. I thought I don't know why I thought Tyler sold a lot more, but one sixty nine for Tyler. Voice in the Hero, 150. 143 for Polo G. Young boy dropped to Siri Cottrell, got 138. He dropped that shit in prison. He wasn't even out. Migos did 130. Soulfly. Then yeah, Soulfly did what, 132? Montero, see, 126. He had to do all that shit to do 126. He thought he'd do like 300,000. And then he goes on and on, on. You know, Doug Gunner did 100. Uh, Moneybag did a hundred. Who was this? Doja did a hundred. Meek did a ninety-five. Thug did not. So that's like, like so. Thug, Thug by himself. Y'all would consider him a big dog. Ninety-five. Or do y'all say your legacy at this point? All right, that's a okay. All right, I'm up there. So that's just my that's just my analysis. I like that. Um, I think it's good. Um, I do, I do, I do really listen to this album. And like I said, I was never like a huge Dirk fan, like to begin with. Like I was like, I've been listening to Dirk since they first came out. And like, I'm like a, oh shit, Dirk was on Drake's record. Now I'm listening to what he got going. That was me. Even when I heard, when I heard Dirk say that he, so he just said I be hearing like, he said he bigger than Drake in the trenches. I was like, okay, I get it. Maybe like the hood, like he think, but like, 
when I think of, and I guess y'all can see me. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't hood dude. You, so I'm not even speaking from a perspective of, nah, we don't let, it ain't dirt first in the trenches. But in my experience with dudes who would identify themselves as street dudes, they don't even like listen to, like, if you know, if you know a guy who is either in the life, was in the life, affiliated with street life, whatever, whatever, and he was saying me in the gang, he just like, he a hood dude. Like, he, he a cool, he a hood dude, right? Anybody I've encountered, they don't even listen to, like, like Dirk is mainstream. They don't even listen to mainstream street dudes, right? We don't listen to mainstream street dudes. Like I said, it's the white kids. That's what it's the mainstream street dudes. The street dudes in your city, they listen to underground local people or maybe somebody else from another city that you've never heard of. They don't listen to mainstream shit. So when Dirk said, like, I am the trenches or whatever, like, I'm bigger in the trenches than Drake, I still don't even believe that because y'all both mainstream at this point. And I still feel like most people, and I know I'm nitpicking, oh, but they know you more. I know what I'm doing here. But my point when I heard him say that was like, I don't even think Dirk would be considered like the biggest thing in the hood because when my personal anecdotal experience of people that's in the hood, they really only listen to people who are not mainstream. They're listening to a guy right now that maybe has like 400,000 monthly listeners, but he's talking that like street shit. Somebody that's local or somebody who's on the cusp of bubbling up. If you want to know who's next, Go ask your local dude in the, from the hood. He'll let you know who's up next. So like I said, all in all, pretty good album. I think, honestly, from listening to both, I probably got to listen to it a little bit more. I think King Von's album was better than Dirk's album. Just off the first couple of listens. I want that to be, that's not a definitive statement, but off my first couple of listens, I would say that um, Von shit is better than Dirk shit. But that's all I got for you guys today, man. Make sure you subscribe to me not subscribed. I really, I really appreciate you guys watching listening subscribing i, I want to get them audio numbers up go to soundcloud go to you know, y'all probably don't listen on soundcloud go to spotify and go to itunes search up d friend daily follow there even if you're not gonna listen to it on the audio just follow it so it could bump me up in the algorithm go rate it you can rate on spotify now you can rate on itunes give it five stars keep it pushing go about your day man i really appreciate y'all for listening for watching it's your boy d friend i'll see you guys next time man peace